This is the last biochemical cycle that I expect you to know about. Remember, we talked about the fact that there are essential nutrients that we need. And there are a lot more than just, just these that we talked about. Including there are several we call micronutrients, which are usually cofactors in enzymes. So you're going to need them too. Like a lot of them are metals and like magnesium, calcium, selenium, things like that. But without getting detail how those cir cir cycle, there's a more important element that's going to be part of all DNA molecules as well as all energy molecules, the ATP, which is the energy currency inside the cells. It's phosphorus. So phosphorus is also very important for life. But phosphorus is easier because it never becomes part of the atmosphere. There is no phosphorus in the atmosphere. Phosphorus is always in the soil or in life or in the water. So the way it works is like this. There's going to be phosphorus trapped inside the rock, you know, uh, so there's phosphorus in the rock. Now, um, the, that gets eroded, and then in the soil, there's going to be these phosphates. And then the plants or other producers can pick up those phosphates, and notice that's happening here in the water as well. And then when the phosphorus get incorporated into the producer, which then gets eaten, and then it becomes part of the food web. Then after those things die and, and, and they get decomposed, it goes back to the water, which then completes the cycle, or black to the sand, which then completes the cycle. Now, erosion can pick up some of the phosphate from the soil and throw it into the water. So they, that's how they both connect over here. And the same thing is true about the nitrogen cycle or the carbon cycle. Uh, erosion and weathering move the things around between the water and the land. Now, some of that stuff will settle into the sand, and then over millions of years become rock, which then can cycle back into the land. So you see how that's how it, the cycle completes, which is also true about the nitrogen cycle and the carbon cycle. So that's the phosphate cycle. It's a lot simpler, and you don't really need to know the steps of this one. Uh, but uh, it's important to know that the phosphorus is an important chemical. It's part of DNA. It's part of ATP. And so it's going to be very important for life. And there's a cycle that involves that as well. Now, when we were talking about the nitrogen cycle, we did mention that sometimes when you increase the nutrients in too much, it's going to have something that's called an algae bloom when, it's the pre when, the, when the producers are no longer limited by what usually limits them, which is the availability of nutrients. You see, sunlight is not usually a problem for where pro producers live. Even on the water, the majority of them tend to stay in the top where there's a lot of sunlight anyways. And water does limit ecosystems a lot, but it's usually the nutrients which are truly the limiting factors, especially on the water. Okay, so the availability of these nutrients is going to be what's going to determine how much the producers can grow. Because remember, it's not just about uh, making sugar, it's also about growing. For those things, you need the building blocks, you need those nutrients. So, you will often find that producers will grow suddenly when the nutrients which were limiting them before now are no longer limiting them. Now, while it's true that nitrogen does have uh, an effect on that and that when people fertilize their soil, a lot of the nitrogen does tend to make the algae grow more, it's really the phosphorus that's the key in things like eutrophication. And it's the phosphorus that's the problem with, uh, with modern agriculture. You see, soils tend not to keep the phosphorus for too long because first of all all the nutrients that you're putting on those plants okay are going to be cultivated and sent somewhere else where the person is going to eat it so the soil itself doesn't retain the nutrients so what is, what does that force the agriculture to person to do to keep adding more and more phosphorus right because remember those plants which in a normal natural ecosystem would die off and let those nutrients return to the soil where the decomposer would do their work it would become a cycle but this is not this cycle is not being allowed because the decomposers are never decomposing the, the plant there since the phosphorus is being picked up and sent somewhere else on modern agriculture. You're never going to eat the food exactly in the same place as being consumed. It's like the ecosystem is far away from where you're actually coming from. So it's matter transfer across ecosystems. What this means, though, is that the, the person in a farm needs to constantly add phosphorus. Now, we may even add too much, and the result is that when it rains, some of that phosphorus will run off into the groundwater and then into lakes, rivers, and ultimately into the ocean. Now, if nitrogen was already something that sometimes limits the ecosystem and all of a sudden causes the population to explode when it becomes available, phosphorus even more so. Because phosphorus never has a gaseous phase. Phosphorus cannot be captured by processes such as nitrogen fixation. Phosphorus can only be introduced into the ecosystem by erosion of the rocks usually. And that's something that takes a very, very long time. So that means that ecosystems are usually extremely limited on phosphorus. So when all of a sudden all this phosphorus comes rushing to the oceans, that's when you get this massive growth of algae that causes the process of eutrophication, which we'll talk about in a little more detail on the next lecture series when we do uh, ecosystems.
But remember, that's why the phosphorus cycle is so important. It is the key of what causes this terrible thing that is called eutrophication, and it's also something that humans are doing to the ecosystems of the world.